Ladies and gentlemen, coming in extra hot. It's your boy Chingo Bling. Excited to be back. This is Red Pill Tamales. We got producer Rob in the building. What up, everybody? Hey, man, this is RPT, season number eight, episode 98. We are two episodes away from a hundo, and these allergies trying to take me out the game. <laughs> you will hear a cough drop. You might hear some uh, throat tea stirring in the background. Uh, you, you know, you might hear a couple sniffles. Don't worry. Contrary to my mother-in-law's belief, it is not the Rona. She's like, ay, la tos de Pete. No sé. Ay, la tos. No sé, Pete. Esa tos. Ve, checate, Pete. <laughs> it's, uh, man, I'm excited to be back, man. Um, San Antonio. Six shows of stand-up comedy. I, I was, man, I was, uh, by Sunday, I was in hoodie mode. You were I was, hoodie I mode. was like, jujitsu. I'm in the dojo. Like, you coming to watch Canelo work out. Yeah? You, you know, you ain't, this ain't that Canelo fight. You gonna see Canelo jump a little bit of rope. Bro, I'm gonna glad see Canelo throw them jazz. This is football. how we're starting off, honestly. Like, this is a it, this is back to like a semi regular schedule. But after we get through some announcements, I want to talk about these San Antonio shows. All right, for sure. Yeah, we got announcements. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, yo, next stop though. Yeah, Rally, North Carolina. Very excited. October 24th, Irvine, California. Back to the West Coast. November 3rd, H Town. November 5th through the 7th, and we just had it Las Vegas. November 11th. I'm gonna holler at my boy Lil Moco. Let me I'm gonna see if he can stop by. Uh, Salt Lake City, November 18th. And that is all we have right now. It is a Freedom of Speech Tour. Get your tickets now. Chingobling.com. Join the newsletter. I am super shadow banned, but um, the word's getting out, man. Hey, Chingo's promoting that newsletter. Rob's mm-hmm. on top of it. We're yeah. getting the word out. We're staying in the loop. We just opened up a Discord mm-hmm. chat app page. So as long as you sign up to the Patreon, you can unlock access to go uh, chat with other TIA members and uh, just have like a, there's a general chat section where everybody gets to just kind of meet and greet and kind of send funny shit and talk about what's going on in their cities because it's different all over the country. It's yeah. fun. <clears throat> Excellent. Yeah, guys, stay connected. Uh, they kicked me off TikTok. I'm having issues with Facebook. I'm an Instagram probation. Um, newsletter, newsletter. Join the Patreon. The podcast is really what's saving our, our behind because People are finding out about the tour dates. It's like we blowing past the firewall. You know, we told y'all censorship was coming. Yeah. Uh, I want to start with something, man. Before we get into all the topics, <clears throat> think about how things are going for you. And from time to time, do a comparison. Was I better off in 2018, 2019? Obviously, you know, it's before the pandemic, mm-hmm. which is a big variable. But, um, <clears throat> you know, am I better, am I, am I better off now? Than I was in 2018, 2019. Is there more control, more censorship, less freedoms, supply chain emergency, um, you know, inflation through the roof, mandates, putting a strain on families, whatever happened to my body, my choice. Uh, We're having import oil after just being energy independent. We were on our way to becoming an exporter. Uh, You see the ports are looking crazy. So... Hopefully, it's not going to be a dark winter like they promised. Yeah, for real. And if you're not stocking up, and I'm getting a lot of messages. Shout out to the TIA that send me messages to my personal uh, Instagram at RobGTV where they're like, man, been listening to the podcast, definitely starting to stock up on extra stuff. Like they're, they're doing the same things where they go to the grocery store and they just get that extra sack of this or that extra bag of that or that extra TP or towels or whatever, paper Ammo, towels. Ammo, extra gun. Whatever you got to do. Yeah. Uh, my Patriot Supply, if they're still available, you know, some of the stocking food. Hey, you know. don't shout them out because I got to log on and get some shit. <laughs> right. And I'm scared they're going to sell out. So, um, so, yes, absolutely. A shout out to everyone that listens, everyone that tunes in, everyone that spreads the word, all the patrons. All the patrons, patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. So San Antonio, dude, I got to watch Chingo do his thing on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Went into town, uh, visited some family. It was like a birthday weekend thing. Visited, took the twins to their grandparents, all that jazz. And I hadn't seen a set since 2019, like early 2019, maybe summer 2019. And, you know, you, you don't know what to expect when a comedian or comedians in general weren't able to do their thing for a year. You weren't able to do open mics. You weren't able to tour. You weren't able to just hit spots you were supposed to hit. And I knew it was going to be good because I see Chingo very regularly and always stay sharp. And it's just what he does, right? 20 years in the game. But when I said I was genuinely blown away and people at the table that I was sitting at, they were like, they were not shocked that I was shocked because I wasn't shocked. I was just like, holy shit. And I walked into the green room after and I told Chingo, I was like, if this was on HBO or Netflix tomorrow, this would be an absolute blockbuster. You know, you being you, you're like, you think so? I thought the early show was better. You know, your best, you're your own best uh, critic, right? But dude, it was out of this world good. Oh man, I'm so, man, bro, I'm happy to hear that, bro. I'm happy to hear, especially coming from you because 
you understand comedy. You know me well. So for you to say, no, that was that was really good. And I'm and I literally was like, bro, man, honestly, I was in my head. I wish you'd have been at the earlier show. What was it about the earlier versus late show? Because usually the later shows are where you're at, no? Sometimes you just have a little bit of doubt or you just kind of get in your head and you start overthinking, like, am I being too laid back in conversation or should I crank up the energy? Wait, was that a little bit too much delivery and cadence on that line because I'm trying to force the energy? And like, what's up with this table on the right? They seem distracted. You know, mm. it's like, wow, that waitress back there is really loud. <laughs> You know, I wonder what my friend Rob's thinking right now. <laughs> oh, man, he brought friends. I hope they're having a good time. Uh, so sometimes you you just really um, that's where the that's where the black belt jujitsu shit comes in. Hell yeah. By the way, did I do a little jujitsu bit at yes. the show you were at? Yes. Okay, yes. that might have been the first time I ever tried it. By Sunday, man, that shit was kind of tagged up. Had some nice. had some act outs. <laughs> I rearranged some of the surprises and punchlines, and it's 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 looking like a little baby bit. That we might just, you know, you're like in the laboratory, like this one, this one's showing some promise. We, Dude, might, we might let it get a couple, you know what I'm saying? Before, you know, it starts running, grow a little bit of baby legs, a little Deadpool baby legs. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch yeah. Deadpool? Deadpool, yeah. The, 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 that's, the, that's the superhero. Yeah, thing, yeah. So yeah. when they blow his, or they chop his legs in half and he's got the little baby legs, little weird baby legs in the middle of the movie. Mm-hmm. But anyway, funny you say that about jiu-jitsu. We went to a sushi spot. Uh, her sister lives on the Riverwalk. We stayed with them one night. And the sushi spot's at the bottom, like underneath the apartment complex or whatever. And uh, Dawn was wearing her Henzo Gracie shirt. And the, the server, this, this, this uh, hipster dude with a man bun, and she's like, is that a jiu-jitsu jersey or a jiu-jitsu shirt? And she's like, yeah. He's like, oh, nice. And I just look all around. I was like, yeah, it says Henzo Gracie. Yeah, yeah. it's a jiu-jitsu shirt, you he, fuck. He probably don't know a lot about that. Or he did, and he was just trying to be cool with it. Like, oh, is that a jiu-jitsu shirt? Cool, oh. you know? I know who Henzo is, or I know. Uh-huh. Them. Anyway. Yeah, he's a big YouTuber too. Yeah, right. yeah, for sure. I'll be doing the tutorials sometimes. No, I'll just be watching the motherfuckers. Yeah, the Graces are great. But no, man, again, back to the show. Fucking great. Awesome. They loved it. And those Saturday shows were packed to the gills. Like they <clears> were yeah. around the block, down the street. Dude, man, um, you said Saturday? Yeah. Okay, I believe it was my... Man, I can't remember which shows it was where I had some guests and they like... I don't know, maybe we didn't turn in the, the guest list in on time, but they like oversold the seats. They're like, we're past sold out, we're to capacity. That was Saturday. Like fire marshal. Yeah. So f- so I guess for one of the shows, they couldn't accommodate my guests, and I had to text people like, hey, man, sorry, I know you and your wife got a hotel room. Yeah. You know, man, could y'all do tomorrow? My fault. And it's just like a pain, you know. So I'm going to stay on top of that. I was just thoroughly surprised that even though I'm super shadow banned, the word got out. I mean, we tried running the Facebook ads and things like that. So we're trying to figure that part out. But the patrons really came through. Just San Antonio, man. San Antonio ha- got my back. And we gained some new patrons, too, because a lot of people oh, yeah. didn't even know that we did a podcast or anything. Super shout out to them. Chingo made these stickers that he's been handing out at shows. Um, but I, And I got... It was cool, too, because some people... They like I got fist bumps, but nobody like stopped me, which was cool. Like they were just like I'd go to the restroom, coming back, somebody just you know give me a fist bump or whatever. I was like, oh cool, maybe he listens to the podcast, and knows who I am or whatever. But it was like the trifecta. It was definitely the podcast. It was definitely the newsletter because my soul heard some people about that. Like hey, I didn't even see any ads or know he was in town, didn't see any posts, but I got the newsletter because she has one, you have one, and then uh, the Patreon, obviously the TIA. So that was like the trifecta that I don't want to say was solely responsible for because we did have some ads running from the Her Apparel account, but. It's just trying to make it happen around all this censorship. Yeah. So I'm going to do a better job on tour of promote, promoting the podcast, but definitely sign up to the newsletter. It's, it's yeah, free. Please. It's free. And we're going to do our best to make it worth your time. I, I want to send some recipes, maybe just like just some cool exclusive content that's like, man, open it up. Check yeah. us out. <clears throat> so lots to talk about, man. Oh, you know, I didn't even put it on the list, but um, let's say, not let's say, but let's start with this. I, I don't know if you saw it. Because it's on the same subject. The post that uh, Inform with Anthony posted, because he's a lot of people are losing their... So Instagram changed the swipe up about a month ago to the link sticker. Like it's, They call it a link tag or a link sticker in your uh, where the polls and the questions and all the other buttons are. You put a link sticker now to your website or whatever resource. I don't know, maybe a dozen conservative leaning you know moderate right kind of people are getting the same notification you know beginning october 25th beginning beginning november 2nd you're going to lose access to a lot of these creator tools and a lot of them have that link sticker as the one that's highlighted as you're going to lose access to your link sticker 
if you don't know what it is or you've never had it and you don't have a need for it, it's like whatever. But when you're a journalist, when you're somebody who's, you know, selling tickets, you're somebody that's selling access to whatever, and that platform takes away your, that's, that's a big deal. And it's all because of the way that, you know, they talk about things yeah. and the kind of content they put out. So I kind of wanted to see if you'd seen that. And it's a red flag. Huge red because flag. Because you got to look at it through the scope of like, you got midterms coming up, you got 2024 coming up, you still got a lot of chatter yeah. of things that maybe are unsavory to the uh, Silicon Valley oligarchs. Right. You know what I mean? Silicon Valley liberals. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, he's, he gave over a hundred million dollars or something to help Biden win. Yep. Messing with voting and these third party little organizations. So it's no secret that big tech loves to shadow ban and silence, you know, certain type of people. But if you look at it from the timing perspective, it's, it's a red flag. Cause it's like, okay, how worse will it get between now and 2024? What other things they're going to start cracking down on? Google already said, you ain't finna be on our video platform. Mm-hmm. Talking about you. If, Anything that don't fit the climate change narrative, get out of line. You will be demonetized. So first it's like, we're going to take away your link sticker. Yeah. We're going to take, oh, can't do this. Oh, no more stars on Facebook. And they're just like social credit scoring you to death. Like this is the behavior we're trying to incentivize and penalize and mm-hmm. you ain't going to make no money. Oh, you want to be on our platform talking all that. Uh, oh, we're going to get to herd immunity due to what is it natural immunity yeah natural immunity. like the solution is a lot of people got to catch it and then we'll stop it in its tracks not one size fits all fits all jab force you <clears throat> cause uh, possibly causing a a super germ in the future mm-hmm. which will really really make an impact but you know i digress so some of these you know like for example lots of scientists and data and v- virologists vaccinologists feel that it's not a one size fits all solution. It's all about marketing, marketing, marketing a jab. Right. You know, we all got to praise Big Pharma now. Now they're the hero. Mandates are cool now, according to half the country. <laughs> oh, medical apartheid. Oh, my body, my choice. That's no longer a thing. Oh, you're going after pilots, bus drivers, truck drivers. You, we already having a supply chain crisis. And I know a lot of people on the left, they see the bare shelves, Joe thing. They're like, nah, man, you know, there's a lot of factors. Okay, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of variables. Everything from regulation in California where you got all these containers ready to get unloaded. Oh, but there's a labor shortage. Oh, and the truck drivers, there's this new CARB thing. It's like California Air Regulatory Board. Meaning if your truck is three years or older... You can't pick up or unload in this bitch. So it's all this regulation. And then Pete Buttigieg is on motherfucking daddy paternity <coughs> leave, being a good father and shit. Like, hey, man, we got a mission. We got to unload this shit. The American public, I mean, our, it's a supply chain crisis. We should have been. See, look, they gave Trump a hard time when he was like, no, we need to bring back you know, our stuff to America. We need to build in America. You know, we got to be tough with China. We got to play this tariff war and this and that so that we could be, it's like wartime. We got to bring it back. It's too much of a, uh, you get backlogged, it backlogs the whole fucking supply chain. What did you say that was? Was that in California? CARB? Yeah, CARB. I think it's California Air Regulatory Board or something like that. (laughs) That's crazy. Okay, yeah. California Air Resources Board is effectively enforcing heavy-duty diesel vehicle regulations in support for California's clean air goals. If your vehicle does not meet safe and clean air laws, you could be subject to fines temporarily lose the ability to operate in California. And then Biden could ease up on regulation, causing diesel gas to be cheaper to get more trucks on the road so that the shelves have supplies. And we ain't out here looking like motherfucking Soviet Union. I even saw an article. They're trying to make bread lines cool. Like, it's actually, you know, no one asked the Soviets. What? Yeah, it was something. I was like, are y'all serious? Like... Nobody asked the Soviets if the bread lines were like a form of community and you get to meet people in the bread line. Bro, come on now. 
you know. You know, I hate to sound like super, super exaggerated or hyperbolic and stuff reg- like here on the podcast regularly, but you can't help but ignore a lot of this stuff. And when you go to liberal type sources or left wing sources, they really try to sugarcoat this shit. They try to just they're like be patient stuff. They're yeah. like it's a thing. It's a part Hang of the process. On. It's good for the economy. <laughs> yeah, inflation is good. Whoa, come on, dude. No, and I, no. They catch me making me feel like I'm the crazy person when I do say like, "Hang on a second. That's they gaslighting you, bro. Right, man. You can't give me. You can't give me not one example. I dare any economist. I dare any find me an economist that could justify saying slow growth and high inflation is good. Find me an economist that says hyperinflation is a sign of good times to come. No, some would argue we already in a recession. We already in stagflation. It's uh, stagnation growth, high inflation, wild cost of goods are going up. So your real wages, when you factor it all in, is low. And a lot of these uh, charts that they show, they call it core inflation, where they don't factor in food inflation and fuel inflation. Mm -hmm. They leave everything else in there and they go by core inflation. How are you going to take out food and fuel? That is like the cornerstone nucleus of, of, of where your expenses and, you know, inflation and cost of goods affect you. There's, a, there's this post that we have on the What You Said page that was from weeks ago, maybe even a month or two ago. But it's this one right here where it's how today's liberals see the world. And it's a little kid like, wow, a place of make-believe, right? It has all of a sudden gone viral. I don't know if you've noticed in the last oh. like 24 hours. It has almost 100,000 views. Wow. Comments are coming in like crazy. It's got like 3,000 like hearts or likes or whatever we call them these days. And people are going at it in that comment section. And it's really funny. Like, How are the liberals defending... Uh, what are they see. saying? Like, let's see. Like, what, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Well, here's a few of them. Um, how Trump supporters see themselves, and they misspelled themselves, but it's okay. I don't like being a word Nazi. How conservatives read an article about science written by a person who thinks a man died then came back to life and watches over them despite their inability to practice any positive any positivity from the Bible. And it's just you know, there's a lot of that, right? Like attacking some of the core values of a, of a I guess, a conservative. Yeah. But there are some, there are some other ones that, and I don't, I don't know. You don't like going at it. I don't like seeing other people go at it. But sometimes it's so dumb. Like the argument is so bad that even fans are just, or just people are like, okay, I'm not gonna let this go untouched. But well, I think that meme, uh, it, it's going viral because it's so open ended that you could watch it and apply your own thing. So for example, if uh, if the whole pronoun thing you know, is, is, a, is a red flag to you. And you watch this, like a world of make-believe, like a world where there's no women and there's no science. <laughs> right, and exactly. It's postmodern. Yes. So if you look at things that way, you can apply that. If you think people are oblivious to what's going on with our economy and the dollar and the fuel price, and they just be like, no, Biden's perfect. He ain't causing none of that. You can look at this little kid, like, look at this make-believe world <laughs> there's a where ton Biden of, is perfect. There's a ton of you win the internet, though, comments. So people, a lot of people obviously got behind it because they get it, right? And also, it's funny. Like, you don't have to say it's 100% accurate. I'm not saying every liberal is like this because, it, it, again, these people don't, it doesn't mean the same thing that it did 20 years ago. And I think those people also that are considered liberals from 20, 30 years ago wouldn't accept what it's become. But a, a good point, though, is that... Um, the fact that a lot of times on the left, they don't factor in human motivation. Sure. For example, when they hop on TV and say, yes, surge the border. Yes, we're going to hook you up. And then people come. They're like, whoa, we didn't think everybody. It's like factor in human motivation. Or if they say, we're going to give you money to stay home and you ain't got to go to work. Okay, what's going to motivate them to not take the free money? and go to work right right so it's like you're not factoring shit in you're not looking at open borders with some kind of common sense um all this uh kickbacks and stimulus um we're about to be at 45 trillion dollars debt like that's what they trying to get us to by the end of the year like it costs zero dollars <clears throat> the white house tweeted the white house official twitter the white house official it's, twitter is one of the most fun funny twitters now you can go watch and read bro it, this shit is like an episode of veep or something where like you could just picture Jen Psaki, like this could be an SNL skit. Like yeah. if I was in charge of SNL, there's so much to make fun of right now. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> For example, uh, uh, it costs nothing. That's that could be a viral. Like you remember when you used to have like, uh, you're gonna live in a van down by the river. Mm-hmm. Those classic uh, uh, Eddie Murphy is buckwheat, like those classic SNL moments. Yes. Uh, you know, Chris Farley throwing himself on the table or uh, more cowbell. 
Love it. Right? Yeah. Okay. It cost zero would be the new cowbell because I picture a, a, a fake White House set. Uh, it's Saturday night. Yeah. Jazz saxophone playing the band. You got your host come out. All right. It's a White House looking set, right? And they're like, sir, sir, many people, Americans are getting a concern with cost of goods, man, the fuel price, food shortages, bare shelves. They're looking at us crazy. And now they're talking about inflation. They're asking questions about everything, critical race theory. They demand answers about this debt and this $3.5 trillion and, and why is this infrastructure and this. Just tell them it costs nothing. We, you, you, you want me to lie to the American people like with a straight face? Like, it costs nothing. They're trying to hype her up. She's like, but guys. Did and then they push her out and yeah. then she has to go out there and fucking tell the lie. Yeah. And, and right in your fucking face. Like you, like you, like you dumb. Dude. It costs zero dollars is a new cowbell. Dollars. That might be something I have to try to work on somehow. Kind of like the Despacito post that we posted just now where it's, yeah. let's go Brandon. Dude, the how did the song, let's go Brandon, go number one? <laughs> it's right behind Adele on the top 10 charts of iTunes. I saw it's number one on the hip hop charts. Oh, no way. Man, bro, like I get it. Some people who are down with the trend, maybe they don't even know why they mad at Brandon. But yeah, it it truly is becoming popular. And I feel this is what I was trying to predict to Mighty Soul this morning. Yeah, because <clears throat> I said, hey, I decided to pull up the clip, one of the first clips we put up from my Periscope. It's like eighteen minutes. It's like why did Chingo Bling vote for Trump? Mm -hmm. And Frank went in there and cut out some pieces of my rent. <clears throat> But I was telling Mighty Soul, I was like, people are going to look back at this shit like two years from now, three years from now, four years from now. And if they notice that we're not headed in a good direction, we're not better off, we're headed to kinetic war over Taiwan in the South China Sea, woo -de -woo. <coughs> excuse me, these people trying to crush the U.S. dollar. I was like, there's too many persuasive people out there. There's TikTokers. You got Joe Rogan. You got us. You got different people. Just smart. You you might have a woman who leads a um, anti jab mandate protest in New York, and she's just probably saying, "Hey, what happened to her? To me, what happened to yeah? Uh, you know, um, what happened to my body, my choice? And what happened to religious? It's not one size fits all. There's some exemptions. And then you got the NBA players, and then Stephen A. Smith trying to like speak on behalf of the, of the slave masters and shit. The league, like, how dare you? Go against the narrative, Kyrie. Look at Kyrie trying to be slick, like Dude. he his own man, like he's like he's independent, like he got some say. How they just turned on Kyrie Irving like this? Like I've never been a Stephen A. Smith fan. I don't care what man. people say about his ability to present, you know, he lost sports with that and shit. stats and all that shit. Even with that, like you know, his personality is what gets him this big. He's probably got. I think he has the biggest contract at ESPN when it comes to analysts and whatever. I get all that totally. Get your money, capitalism for the win. Yeah, but, yeah, you can have talents at sure doing sports. The way shows. that they turn on Kyrie Irving versus, let's say, Colin Kaepernick blew my mind. Like they're throwing this dude under the bus so hardcore. Even Max him Kellerman. Get, I've never liked you know, Max Kellerman. I don't care what people say. You know, I mean, uh, the CDC says uh, the World Health Organization. Uh, you know, Doctor Fauci. I mean, it's been proven safe and effective, and it's free. Go get it now in the parking lot. Uh, you're near a small. That's some more frustrating. That's some of the most, to me, like frustrating shit about all this. Like, d despite all the like the stats and the science and the mandate and the jabs and all that, yeah, it's the U.S. dollar, yeah, the dollar inflation. <laughs> it's people like that who will just look at you through the camera and be like, "You dummy, you're not gonna know what I'm doing to you or how I'm strawmanning this or gaslighting you, bro." Stephen A. Smith, bro, you lost me. Did you see the Kwame Brown clip? No. Boy, it's so good, you might want to play it, bro. Okay. Well, well him and him? or, or Okay, Kwame, Kwame Brown, <clears throat> you know what he does, right? Yeah, he yeah. does the rants and shit. All right. So he posted one from a yacht. He's like, I'm on vacation. It's my birthday, but I had to address Stephen A. Smith. And then he lights his ass up. Was it on, on his IG? Yeah, it's like okay. a, one of those little IG live type things. <clears throat> but yeah, dude, that's um, <laughs> unacceptable when it comes to somebody like Stephen A. to just throw somebody like Kyrie Irving on I mean, the bus. <clears throat> just pushing the league's... Like, it's almost like, hey, uh, send in Stephen A. Smith to get check these boys. Get them in line. Yeah, we we bring up, you know, sports and what they're doing with these mandates and stuff from time to time. And uh, I, I never look at minor league stuff. And I was looking at MLB because I had brought it up last week, how they were using that Lil Nas X song. And I said NFL. It's actually an MLB campaign. It's not an NFL campaign, but they use it for, like, their national commercials or whatever. Cool, whatever. So I was looking up some MLB stuff and then come to find out that... Um, it looks like the MLB might be making their minor league players have to have a jab mandate or they can't play in the minors anymore. The minor leagues have to get the jab too? I believe so. 
boy, you're in a farm league. Yeah. And they're going to be like, man, I ain't going to make it to the big league. Exactly. Leagues. That's what the carrot they're holding over there. You head. know what? Just because of that, bro. <laughs> number one number one number one number one dude you're gonna have to come out to that <laughs> in raleigh man i wore that fjb shirt boy so anyway. oh by the way i'm pulling up call me brown's instagram by the way mm -hmm. uh all those shirts are out right sorry we had some supply chain issues if you got it late or a little after you ordered it right but every all of them are out the door you probably should already have them uh we're probably gonna do another run of them because so many people at the shows wanted them they sold out in 10 minutes so gone. they're gone so if you want one jingleplane.com is where you can get it if you're a part of the tia you know you can go in there and catch that discount that you can only get if you're a patron that's right that's right Yep. We need a we need a remix of that song and the uh, the EDM version of the uh, Trump. What do you mean? Like I got to put a verse on it? No, no, no. Well, that'd be cool too. No, no, no. We need that song, that Let's Go Brandon song, that's number one, and that Trump song that you tried to come out to one time, where it's like the it's oh, like yeah, what it was, was like, it? It comes from oh, yeah, the, China. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. we need that. Why do you collab. call it? Why, why do yep. you call it? Isn't that racist? No, it comes from China. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We do. <laughs> we got to do it. It's the musical. Uh, the musical version. Boy done showed me up. Ready? I don't like doing adventurous stuff. Okay? Is it? I'm no. dang, I know it's that loud. I don't want to. Okay, maybe this wasn't Is it. Is he on the boat? He's on the boat, but he's just sliding. Is it another one? Yeah, it's like the water's landing. He's he's standing there talking. Mm. All right. Well, if you can't find it, don't worry about it. All right. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> on top of everything we just did osha statement osha made a statement boy they sure you are using that safe and safety angle to force people to do shit colin powell died <clears throat> sanjay b lion sanjay gupta Ooh, he went on rogan we haven't talked about this no dude i oh, cannot man. wait that's probably gonna be the second half of the episode guys sorry but it's gotta be done dude that, that interview is so money there's just so much to pick apart it, it, it was like the soundtrack of our weekend at the airbnb <laughs> all right the super cold and more i don't know what that is we'll get to the super cold uh we want to start off with osha do you see what osha posted by chance today they said that they weren't going to report adverse uh reactions to the jab because they want to discourage people how is that legal possible or ethical by any means how is that safety and health it's not it's far <laughs> from it so the dol and osha uh I don't know what DOL stands for. It just has the acronym. As well as the federal agencies that are working diligently to encourage COVID-19 vaccinations. OSHA does not wish to have any appearance of discouraging workers from receiving COVID-19 jabs and also does not wish to di di dis disincentivize employers, okay, Va their efforts, vaccination efforts. As a result, OSHA will not enforce 29 CFR 1904's recording requirements to require any employers to record work Worker side effects from COVID-19 vaccinations, at least through May of 2022. Isn't that shit the public should know? Bro, I just don't know why they're silencing all the scientists that are saying, <clears throat> you know, this thing isn't one size fits all. Maybe it's not doing what we wanted it to do. Maybe the efficacy rate ain't as high as we want it. Maybe you're going to need boosters all the time. And... It could be causing a situation. For one, wasn't Colin Powell vaccinated? Yes, fully vaxxed. I mean, he probably had comorbidities along with age and things. And, you know, <clears throat> arguably some would say that he could have ended the Iraqi war at any time. You know what I'm saying? He, he endorsed nothing but Democrats all the time. Mm -hmm. And he came out of saying <laughs> that he didn't, wasn't a fan of Trump. Yeah, he, was, <clears throat> he, he endorsed Hillary mm -hmm. and so on. So he was involved over there when it was the weapons of mass destruction. On that movie, the Dick Cheney movie, with, um, you know which one I'm talking about? No, I didn't see it. But you know the name of it, right? Like the movie itself? I don't. Yeah, so <clears throat> anyway, they had a character on there that was like Colin Powell. Mm. So he was fully jabbed. So OSHA, I, I, somebody, somebody from the left, somebody explained to me, somebody from the OSHA industry, like, how is this ethical what would you think the response would be if you if you had to play the role of somebody from osha that's writing this up and putting it together yeah uh normally you know 
under current um, under under normal situations we understand how some people could feel that you know it's a dereliction of duty it's a little irresponsible to withhold side effect information you know because arguably the public and, and workers uh who who fall under this would want to know however we are in a pandemic this is the scariest thing we have to bend the rules this is an emergency this is a crisis we're not through it yet and for the safety of those that have already gotten the jab we have to protect them rob we have to protect them from the unjabbed so it takes precedence over reporting any minor yet rare side effect (laughs) that was pretty good that was pretty good that somehow is, uh, that should also be an SNL bit skit. Is all these agencies that are trying to cover up for this administration, like all the rules that they're making that don't really make any sense, try to make them funny, try to make them make sense. Even in a joke setting, probably people would be like, what? Why? Like that dude, JP Sears, he does a monthly at that club we were at. Really? Mm hmm. Supposedly he's based out of Austin. Yeah, or something. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. No, yeah, I've been following him for years because he's always been based out of Austin. He did a lot of work, not work with, but he's done a lot of collaborations with like the Onnit crew and people from the early days when Onnit first came up, probably, I guess, seven, eight, nine years ago. Was he ago. always on some conservative shit? No, honestly, I've never known him. Maybe I just didn't pick up on it, but he was just more about the, like, his character is still his character. And it was always about like, the soft spoken, you know, meditation kind of like, I don't know if he was making, you know, taking jabs at that side without me really realizing it, but he's way more outspoken about all of this conservative stuff than he's ever been, which a lot of people are. I don't know. I don't, some people might not be fans of it, just like I'm sure they're not fans of the shit we're doing, but it's spot on. <clears throat> the shit's funny. Well, the feedback in San Antonio, man, like, check this out, man. I went to HEB, <clears throat> the cashier, it turned into a meet and greet. <laughs> <clears throat> the one where you posted the picture of the empty shelf? Yes. <clears throat> so people were showing up that weren't even shopping. Like, hey, um, like you notice, like, okay, I think this person's following me. And then towards the end, it's like, hey, my friend works here. He told me you were here. Can I get a picture real quick? And they ain't got nothing in their basket. Yeah. <clears throat> it's just pushing around an empty little basket. Yeah. And this one man, he like came up to me in the aisle, older dude. He's like, hey, I, I appreciate you for trying to educate the uneducated. You know what I'm saying? And, Word. you know, so overall at the shows, the VIP, to me, everywhere we'd go, man, everyone was like, yeah, man, love what you're doing, man. It takes a lot of courage and people need to wake up and, you know, you know, they, they tricking us and we can't be falling for this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then we had, uh, so we have our, our patch here, right? Our patch from, we had a member of the TIA, his wife, fiance, I believe, sorry, I forgot what it was, gave us this really cool Austin PD patch for the studio. We're going to find someone to hang it up. Appreciate it, Austin PD, to listen to the podcast. We need to get some. Uh, I know there's got to be H Sound Police to listen to the podcast. Oh yeah, and they're something. both they're both probably understaffed, yeah, overwhelmed, uh, disrespected, unappreciated. Yeah, they want to defund them. That might this might kind of segue into something that wasn't on today's topics, but I've been Chicago, listening. Chicago, right? Well, that Chicago and just police, law enforcement in general. Like you know, they get a bad rap. A lot of people don't like them. I get it. Trust me. Like I've said, I've never had a good experience when I get pulled over for speeding or or uh, allegedly speeding. But nonetheless. When you go to these big cities and all these people that are standing up for the Constitution, right? They're doing things that are right. They're not enforcing these crazy mandates. They're they're choosing to be on the right side of history. When they choose to bounce, what's left in these cities? Really bad cops, essentially. People who are willing to do anything and do whatever Australia is doing, do whatever Italy is doing. They will enforce anything. And that's dangerous. And that's going to make those people that stay there, the (laughs) citizens of those cities, dislike law enforcement even more. Yeah, some would argue that it's kind of like a purge. Like yeah. this, this mandate serves as a multifaceted tool, <clears throat> you know, like kind of what you said, like getting out the, like even in the, in the armed forces, mm-hmm. that's a national security threat, man. Mm-hmm. You already have a smaller pool to pick from to be a Navy SEAL because a lot of these high school kids are not, they're not all in shape. Right. <clears throat> Tim Kennedy said, he's like, the pool to pick from is smaller, right? And... <clears throat> You know, you penalizing and you forcing and you mandating and you're dividing and you're segregating. You see in these viral videos of cops, like I've been on the force 18 years. It's my last sign off. Thank you guys. Amazing force. You know, two years shy of retirement, this, that, and the third. But the mandates, bus drivers, nurses, truck drivers. I mean, it's like at some point, I mean, airline pilots, you get in the private sector involved. You know, a lot of people on the right seem to be the only ones making noise, being outraged, saying like, look at what's going on with Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. And then me and my wife are like, shit, what are we doing with touring? 
Are we going to have to be the RV family? Am I going to be that dude that's holding the line, not going to get jabbed, I, got, I can't get on that plane? Or are we just going to just podcast and no more tour? Mm. I tell people that from time to time. Like, hey, if you're going to catch a show, catch it now. Because ain't no telling. Between China and AI and open borders and motherfucking scientism and all this other shit, <laughs> censorship, shadow banning. Yeah, shout out again. The, the newsletter, chingbling.com, is, is one of the best way, if not the best way, to make sure everything stays rolling smoothly. Because um, then if you can't catch a flight, you know, that's not, no bueno. Yeah, man. So those, those are major concerns for sure. <clears throat> the super know. cold. The super cold. So speaking of mandates. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, no, 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 go ahead. Before we go into super cold. Um, we were just talking about, I, I got off track. Vax mandates for cops. Uh, we were talking about Austin, Houston PD, Chicago PD oh, right. is scheduled to lose 50% of their force. I think like as of last night, midnight. So we, we got to check that. But uh, Mayor Lightfoot, she cares more about COVID than crime, which is already bad. So it's like y'all have already all these murders every weekend. There's babies getting shot in drive-bys. You got vice lords, gangster disciples. You got all these gangs right there in the South Side. And... You about to lose half of your police force? Dude, that's so dangerous for those <coughs> those cities. Imagine if that happens in all the major cities. Like if you lost just as a round number, 10%, 5%, fuck, fucking 2% of law enforcement in those big cities where you know you there would be so many different parts of the city that have would have no coverage from law enforcement. Especially communities of color. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Working class communities, black and brown people. That's the part the Democrats don't like to remind you of. Who is this going to affect? So, hey, who do you ask? Don't mind me. I'm just a coconut. Some of y'all won't ever even listen to this. Uh, what do you think people <laughs> like Lori Lightfoot? Because there's no way that she... Rem- like a lot... Of, I, I say this, but who knows? Uh, a lot of people like her won't remain in their positions of power for much longer. Like when they're up for re-election, it'd be hard to believe that they would keep those, power, those, those positions, right? What do you think people like her do after this? <sighs> Man, that's if our elections even how auditable are elections i mean how much corruption is there in these markets so in other words will Lori lightfoot lose i would like to think there's so. a lot of dude anytime you never know if it's trolls or if twitter's a real place or anything but like <clears throat> anytime lena hidalgo or houston chronicle or mayor uh sylvester <coughs> uh what's the name sylvester turner yeah sylvester turner <clears throat> these different people or they'll be like for example abbott will do something good He'll be like, I had to send some you know, DPS down there to help at the border. Or, hey, guys, y'all can't be mandating shit over here. It'll be full of comments of lefties just like, oh, my God, can we just roll him off a cliff already? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Damn, you're going to roll wheels off the cliff like that? That's what that, They be going in talking about, that's why we need to turn Texas blue. And look at this bullshit. They want us out here dying like Florida. How, could, how dare you get rid of mask mandates? The one, the one rebuttal to all those comments should just be this. Can you point me out to one blue city that's doing it right, or even a blue state for that matter, that you want Texas to emulate or Florida to emulate? Well, guess what, Rob? There's a ton of people that will argue with you because in their mind, and listen up, y'all. I know it might sound crazy to y'all because it sounds crazy to me. In their mind, Governor DeSantis is ruining Florida. He is killing people. They are dropping like flies. It is very dangerous, Rob. Oh, my God, Texas, they're dropping like flies. So many cases. All that freedom. All that fresh air. Who would ever want to live like that? Meanwhile. <clears throat> and they're living in a fucking polluted-ass, homeless-ass city. Meanwhile, the number of cases in Florida has dropped drastically. Have you seen that? I heard about it, but it won't be on the mainstream news. Absolutely not. You're going to hear that from two Mexicans in a studio talking about it on a podcast. With a mini split. With a mini split and a flag hanging over our shoulders and a, and a cowboy hat on a cactus because no one else is covering shit like this, unless it's independent media. But you would tell, you know, let's just say they're like, yeah, well, California's doing it great. Not true. Not true. Let's pull up numbers. You can look up stat for stat. You can look up mandate for mandate. You can look up how many people are leaving versus coming. It's just not the Lockdown, same. How, amount of lockdowns, like draconian measures, like ain't even effective. Absolutely ridiculous. If there wasn't so many ads on this Sun Sentinel, I could give you the exact stats you for know, Florida. L- LA County, are they doing vax mandates? Are they like New York? I'm pretty sure. You got to show everything. I'm pretty sure. If you want to go indoors, yeah. 
Because we have a lot of people that listen. Shout out to y'all that live in California. Tons of them. Tons and tons of, of listeners and patrons, people in the TIA that live in California. I actually have some funny stories here from from DMs from people that, that sent me, you know, just shit that we could talk about on here or uh, Chingo Chats. That's crazy, man. And they would love to leave if they could. But it's just not the reality for a lot, reality for a lot of people. They have to stay put, whether it's for kids, jobs, or what have you, or it's just not the right time. The means aren't there to leave that fucking place. And there's a lot of entertainment type people that ain't even from there that won't kind of won't leave or they're stuck there or they feel like that's still the place to be maybe that's why they're mentally stuck there <laughs> they might be mentally stuck there they think somebody's gonna pick them out of crowd at you know like oh man i saw you at the at the laugh factory here's your sitcom here, uh, politi- uh, PolitiFact, this was last week. The media is pretty quiet about Florida's decline in COVID cases, no mask mandate or vaccine mandates. Uh, PolitiFact said that was mostly false. They said... Uh, you know how they have their name, little meters? Yeah, na- name the stat again. This was a, an Instagram post that they, they tagged here. Okay, so the media is pretty quiet about Florida's decline in COVID cases, no mask mandates or vaccine mandates. And then they're... they're Truthometer, factometer over here. Saying it's mostly false. Yeah. And then, you know, you can go on to read it. News media have reported for weeks on the recent decline in COVID cases in Florida. Really? Florida does have measures that restrict mask mandates in schools and limit requirements to show proof of vax. But the decline in cases occurred only after Florida led the nation and Florida still ranks among states with the highest case rate. Yeah, but they're free as fuck. And you have a 99 point whatever case a uh, 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 beating this thing and wh- what what is it a huge percent it's like 80 percent of people who die of covid have four other comorbidities mm-hmm. um there's just a lot of stuff that the average motherfucker they be thinking i got a hundred percent chance of ending up in the hospital and being intubated like whether you're 20 years old or whatever yeah the jab's gonna make it stop and it's like no you well, can still catch it bro welcome to day 584 of 15 days of flatten the curve that's where we're at <laughs> That's where we're at, and I never, when we started the show, and, you know, the election came and went, and inauguration came and went, and we were going into the spring, I was like, there's no way in my head that they would ring this out this far. We're getting into the holidays of 2021 here. So let me ask you this. What current conditions you consider to be, like, it's still 15 days, like it ain't ended? Like, what, what is it that you can't do, or, or what are they doing to extend it? Well, for one, these <clears throat> mandates, right? These six, whatever Joe Biden's Build Back Better plan, whatever six pillars, that, you know, that he calls it, that it consists of. At the at the helm of that is this mandate where they're pushing, they're bullying big corporations to get their employees to get jabbed. They're pushing this narrative that it's, you know, it's a pandemic of the unvaccinated. This fear mongering kind of, that's really the, the pandemic, right? Is like how much fear is being pumped through, you know, terrestrial radio, through the television to people who will eventually, we talked about this last week too, they're going to break them down. A lot of people will be broken down by the time the next election comes around. Who knows where we are as a, as a country, right? But as free-wise. But right now, it's, it's that. It's, people are really torn between, it's not a bad thing that the government wants you to take this jab. It's not even about being anti-jab. You can't even say jab anymore, by the way. You know how we talk in code online? You got to say poke because now they'll oh, hit, they don't caught up with the jab. They don't caught up with the jab. They'll hit you with that 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 World Health Organization or the uh, whatever tags, which always oppress those posts. That always less I see it. So use poke. Maybe we'll start using another word after poke. But it's not that the you're sauce. the sauce. <laughs> they hit you with the sauce. But uh, you can't you can't say that you're anti uh, poke. And, and still be, you know, okay with it in general. Like, it has helped, apparently, some a lot of people. Uh, it's real, obviously, whatever. But that's number one for me. Like, you can't have this old guy at the helm of the, of the ship telling the entire country that you're going to do this. There's been no legislation about this. There's literally been no voting on these pokes of any sorts. It is completely, completely unconstitutional and should be legal. But you have unions and corporations and people in schools and school boards and everyone's at each other's throats over this one thing. And that's not even, that's not even covering all the other stuff underneath it. And you think Trump would have been like that? No, he wasn't like that from the jump. So, hey. And he's the one that came out with it or had it launched or whatever. So anybody listening that if you used to be on the left like me, just because you ain't know no better for whatever reason, right? Immigration, whatever. And you are starting to be curious and open your, your mind to other opinions and, and views, right? Let us know. What was it 
it, it, how do you feel? Is it the man? Like, I'd argue that at some point, these mandates got to make lefties uncomfortable. Like, I'll give you an example. My homeboy told me, he said, hey, my cousin's a truck driver in Cali. <clears throat> He's like, he used to think I was crazy. All the stuff I'd, I'd be on, I'd tell him to look out for. And he's like, man, he said, my homeboy told his cousin, they're going to come for y'all next. They about to mandate y'all to get the Pope, the sas to the arm. And, you know, they're going to br- make the public blame the shortages on the unjab, unpoked drivers mm. and stuff like that. He's like, nah, man, I'm just a driver. I don't even deal with people. They ain't finna do that to us. Boom. Mandate. He's like, hey, man, uh, I've been listening to what you've been telling me all this time, and I need some info on this and that, and I'm trying to move, and like now starting to like, oh, shit, whoa, motherfuckers tried to tell me. So <clears throat> I'm very curious about those kinds of stories, like where people, cognitive dissonance, you know, cognitive bias, uh, where you like snap out of the hypnotism, snap out of the persuasion and the brainwashing, mm. where all of a sudden, because once you see it, it's hard to unsee. You can't unsee it. Especially when it comes to like a Don Lemon or you start to look at these talking heads and you start to really peep it. Like, why? Did, yeah, why did they call it horse goo? Mm-hmm. Like, ivermectin is also used for piojos. What if they just said, Joe Rogan is taking piojo medicine? Yeah. You know what they I'm probably saying? probably did say that on Telemundo. Yeah, medicina <laughs> para piojos. That's funny. See, that's some more SNL shit right there, too. Yep. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm curious, you know, because like I said, a lot of the feedback lately, people at the shows are like, hey, man. Dude, you telling the truth, bro. Like people, they they not wanting to look and pay attention. Like they can't ignore some of this shit. And I'd argue that mandates. I mean, not everybody is pro poke. Sure, I'm pretty sure it's gonna, people are gonna start to be like, man, would Trump have been on us? Because all of Trump's crises were media manufactured. It's all like, oh, Stormy Daniels said this, or supposedly he said this, and you know, you know, he was mean and this, and could this mean blah 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 blah? He's a fascist, you know, he's Hitler, and it's like he wasn't the one asking us to fucking mandate this, that, and a third. What is he? Uh, now we listened to the Sanjay episode, and we're getting to Gupta and his nonsense on Rogan, but. What is the argument right now for people that don't take it? it? It was still, you know, we always say like, you know, you, you could pass it on to grandma and grandpa and, you know, have them get severely uh, sick. But they were the first, old people were the first ones to get this poke, yeah. right? <clears throat> when they rolled it all out. And then, you know, other people started taking it voluntarily. Great. Now it's available to anybody that wants it. Okay, cool. Go get it if you believe that's what you want to do. But if you get it, okay, you get the poke and someone else doesn't get the poke, they have to get it in order to keep you protected, Right. That's that's all these memes that you see. Yeah, that's where the it logic makes, starts to kind of... It's out the window. It goes completely <laughs> out the window. Uh, one of the people that I was with, he has somebody in the family who... Everyone had it. Everyone had the poke in the family except for this one person. And they didn't want to get together with this person at all. The whole family had got the fucking poke, but they wouldn't allow this person to come... It was a member of their family. Yeah, they wouldn't let this person come into the circle <laughs> because... And not only not come in a circle, but basically ostracized from everyone else. And it's like they finally just submitted and they got it because otherwise they could not be a part of the family basically anymore. And it's like, but it doesn't make any sense. They all have it. They all got poked. They should all be protected. They should all have great immunity. You know, what sense does that make? I'm starting to lose my mind about this. Well, I mean, don't even take it from us. Take it from the inventor of the mRNA vaccine, dude named Dr. Robert Malone. He's one of the main people saying we're going to make shit worse, forcing this on everybody because the virus is smart. It wants to figure out how it can replicate and, and work around the defenses because the, the poke itself is going to be designed for like a specific spike protein or what have you. So the virus is going to morph. In, it's like you give a whole bunch of kids antibiotics mm-hmm. and they don't all finish it and you just get this little super bug now. <clears throat> so, like I said, don't take it from us. Take it from all these world-class scientists, virologists, vaccinologists, lots of people in the scientific medical community who, you know, for, for one, why'd y'all have to change the definition of, of poke? Three times. To include, oh, it doesn't really protect. Oh, okay, well, okay, so it's a, it's a therapy then. Yes. Can we consider it a therapy amongst you know, all the minor clonal and, and this, that, and the third. There's a lot of therapies. Can mm-hmm. you just lump it in with the other therapies? Or it has to be the motherfucker, you must, or you cannot participate in society. Like, and not just those therapies, like over the counter, like, well, not over the counter, but prescription type therapies, but just things you could, supplements, right? Uh, vitamins and minerals that you could take. 
not a lot of that gets talked about unless it's a, through, through an independent, you know, uh, source. Like my stack of stuff, which I don't even know if we've talked about it, but like what I've been taking is ends up being the same thing that Crowder talked about when he got sick. He didn't get COVID. His wife got it. His mom and dad got it. His mom and dad are in their seventies, I think, or eighties. What is it? What do you take? Uh, it's so it's NAC, vitamin C, zinc, um, and uh, there's another one. Uh, shit i have it on my phone but i've been taking this for months now and knock on wood whatever superstitious thing but i've been good right and i've had almost a ton of the closest people around me have it at one point or another not while they had it but i've known that they've had it some people have had it twice some people have been jabbed like tim Dillon and got it twice after that they obviously also don't take the best care of themselves but regardless like they got through it they're good um, it's just like, there's a lot of therapeutics out there that could help you from getting sick, but it doesn't go talked about. <laughs> and even like what Rogan was saying on Sanjay with the Sanjay episode, like mm. if it's really about health, then we would be, you would hear a lot more of these talking heads and politicians saying, Hey guys, <clears throat> one thing we've really learned is that poor health and, and we got to drop some pounds and, you know, diabetes makes this shit worse. And, you know, now's the time that we really can't afford to have other shit going on. It, it weakens our immune system. And it's it's a public health thing that motherfuckers get to move in and quit eating so fucked up, right? And Sanjay's like, you know, of course, these motherfuckers always got to find the other angle. Sacale la contra Rogan way. <laughs> He's like, well, this is a, it's an emergency now though. So you can't expect, you know, everybody start doing sit-ups and then all of a sudden type of thing. You know what I mean? Let's get into that episode. Let's get into it because there were so many things about it. You know, and halfway through it, I was like, this is frustratingly annoying. Like, just the way he would just, like, backpedal. He would just try to go skirt around topics, skirt around Bro. things Rogan was asking him. Bro. Had when, to, yeah, go ahead. But I had to muscle through it. And I'm glad I did. But go on. Yeah, because there were... T exactly, I agree. There were tons of moments like that. I think even towards the end, he's like, don't you think it's fishy that... All these suspicious activities with these suspicious characters in the Wuhan lab and how this shit started and you're not allowed to question the, the origins of it. And you had Dr. Peter Barrick and, and uh, I mean, Peter Daszak and uh, Francis Collins and Ralph Barrick and the, the, the bat lady. And he and Sanjay's like, yeah, we did a whole segment on CNN where we went to the NIH and we saw how to grant money. And he's like. But did you see Rand Paul question Fauci and how he was like gain of function? He's like, yeah. And it seemed like they were arguing over what is gain of function. And you know what I'm saying? And then he's like, but don't you think it's funny that we that basically we know it came from there? And and can we trust the CCP? He's like, well, I, uh, he's like, hey, we're going too fast. We're going too fast. No, nah, he's like, like can he, we yeah. go back? He says, just the fact that you are hesitating. He's like, that pause alone. Mm -hmm. He said, if I told you right now, do you think Jamie, Jamie started the pandemic on purpose? He'd be like, no. Yeah. Instantly. But we're a pausing with these motherfuckers. And there ain't enough outrage with that shit. They want us outraged at each other. <clears throat> there was a, there was a clip from yesterday yesterday well it was probably from a couple days ago where he went on don lemon after yeah did you see it i saw that little bitty clip okay. so disappointing because he's like yes but it wasn't uh approved for covid ivermectin was not approved for covid so this was uh this is just a clip. first of all how brown did sanjay look when he was on rogan <laughs> he looks super tan. His skin. Yeah. This man had natural, authentic. He was coming across as an authentic Indian brother. Yeah. You my Indian American brother. You a neuroscientist. Much respect for you coming on here on Rogan's platform, stepping away from the norm. Boom. They had him back next to Don Lemon. Boy, they caked on so much damn powder on this. Let's to treat COVID-19. Let's, Let's watch. He did say something Look about all that powder. ivermectin yeah. that I think wasn't actually correct about CNN and lying, okay? Ivermectin is a drug that is commonly used as a horse dewormer. So it is not a lie to say that the drug is used as a horse dewormer. I, I, I think that's important, and it is not approved for COVID, correct? That's right. That's correct. That's right. It, it, it is not approved for COVID, and you're right. I mean, the FDA even put out a, a statement saying, you know, basically reminding people it was a strange sort of message from the FDA, but that said, you're not a horse, you're not a cow, stop taking this stuff, is essentially what they said, referring to ivermectin. 
Now, I think what, what Joe's point that is, it's been about is that for humans, and, but not necessarily for COVID, right? Yeah, that's correct. So what a smug bitch, man. What a bitchy bitch, bitch. Uh, sorry yeah, if you have yeah, kids them, in the room. Them liars, I mean, uh, them lawyers called Sanjay back on that screen so fast. Sanjay, playboy, didn't we tell you not go on that damn podcast? Get it, powder him up. Powder him up. You saw how ashy his lips were looking on CNN? Bro. He looked, he looked like it was Halloween and he was trying to play Frankenstein. Listen. It's like this Matrix is doing us a favor by making some of these things happen. Some of the things where the people like Pelosi are saying the, the, the quiet parts out loud, you know, and Biden freaks out. It's almost like the Matrix is glitching for everybody, and it's helping people see these red pills, right? They're getting these these little like, crumbs. Of I the... hope so. I don't know, man. So it's hard to snap people out of it. Man. Crowder had the best one of the best takes on this where he was like, look, it's just straight up, you can tell how cowardly a man can be when he's in his echo chamber versus met with some resistance. That, yeah. Paraphrasing, but that's kind of what he was saying. And this is that perfect example where he's got Don Lemon there. And he's basically, he's giving him, he's setting him up to knock it out of the fucking park. Just agree with me, Just agree with motherfucker. Don't say nothing else. Uh-huh. We, he, he, then we just meet with the lawyers and they said, it is not a lie that it is used for horse uh, dewormer. And that's the unfortunate part, because this guy's supposedly, you know, a great neuroscientist. He's been in the medical community for a long time. He is the chief correspondent chief for CNN. Cook. And that's the kind of shit that he's trying to just peddle to the uh, American people who trust the cable news network or whatever it's, you know, called at this point. Cable entertainment news network. But that's that's shitty, man. If you're watching that and still, like, hanging on to that, you know, full line and sinker, you are... Silly. I mean, Sanjay's not going to push back and be like, yeah, you know, Don, but I think Rogan, you know, and his audience, I think he gets a bad rap as this crazy, kooky, right wing conspiracy dude. But he, you know, he's a sure he's a stand up comedian, but he resonates with people because he's pretty transparent, authentic, honest. He has people from both angles. He really has these long conversations about these important topics. I enjoyed being on there. I think we got a, it was mostly positive. We hit it off, and of course, you know, basically, like you said, he wasn't used to getting no pushback on like, I know, but Sanjay, <clears throat> you're telling me that a parent who has some reservations about jabbing up their son, knowing that we got these new studies coming out saying they're going to get myocarditis. What about the myocarditis and this, and that, and the third? And kids do very well with COVID. You know what I'm saying? He's like... Yes, I know, Joe, woo do woo And it's like, yeah, but, and it's like, okay. So you, he said, the same way you feel a sense of security getting the jab. I mean, you know, like he was trying to say, isn't it reasonable to understand where a parent might be coming from? You know, I was thinking about this yesterday too, kind of preparing for this conversation about that episode, <laughs> is that when Rogan references to him having fuck you money, he's like, if you don't have, if you have fuck you money and don't use it like, you have fuck you money, then you're not, you're, you're wasting it, right? Like you're basically wasting the opportunity to have that. He's got so much money, so much uh, influence, so much whatever, everything you could possibly want when it comes to influence and um, people and attention. He's got the, well, some of the most, probably the most attention when it comes to talking about anything. I was thinking, he's so liberal when it comes to talking to people like Sanjay like he's like oh he's such a great guy when he changed his perspective on 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 uh, THC marijuana, and marijuana yeah. all that I thought it was I knew he was a good person it's almost as if he's playing 4D chess with these motherfuckers he's like setting them up a little bit he's setting them up a little bit but he goes he went the entire time he went three hours and 15 20 minutes with him and just he kept his cool pretty I mean phenomenally right for all the shit that they were talking he's like you don't think that was defamatory and Sanjay was like well, I don't know I bet you it is. Yeah. Like, I can get my lawyers on this right after this episode. I if bet you, you it is. Yeah. But my point is, he can go that entire time and just be nice enough to maybe have other people say, all right, I'm willing to go on Rogan just to get more of those conversations going because he could easily just clap back at them and put them in their place. He could have easily jumped across that table. That too. And, and just full pop, mount. popped his little brown head off, his super dark brown head off. All the makeup. Pop but the makeup off his lips. He doesn't do that, right? He takes the the higher road. He's like, I got all the money, I got all the attention. My platform's way bigger than any of your shows that you chief correspond on. So why be so combative, right? So I do applaud him for that. I think that's great. But I think we all know we can see behind the curtain that he could continue with these factual points, put him in his place. But it, then you wouldn't have other people willing to go on a show. I mean, the reason Rogan has such a big target on his back because he's making sense. Totally. You know what I'm saying? Why am I shadow banned? I don't know. I don't even know. You're Insta making too much fucking sense. Instagram won't tell me exactly what the fuck. What I mean, did I come out dancing to Let's Go Brandon? Not yet. <laughs> but I might. 
I don't know if I'm gonna have to do that on my backup page. I can't do it on TikTok. I'm not on there anymore. I'm pretty sure Facebook won't like it. But uh, on Getter, <laughs> Rumble. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the reason Rogan has such a big target on his back is because, like, did you see the View? No, <sighs> bro. There's a clip of the View when they try to do their take. It's like everyone went into damage control. Oh my God, Sanjay went on Rogan. Sanjay went on Rogan. Sanjay went on Rogan. Quick, quick, what are we doing today with, with the view? Boom, talking points, talking points. Okay, what? I, I didn't have to, it's three hours. I didn't have time to watch it. Okay, don't worry. Here's in a nutshell. Sanjay went on there. This is probably going to be one of the main clips where he's pushing back about um, the horse dewormer thing. Okay, go. Sherry Shepard was the only one that stood up for him. Was like, well, you know, Rogan, you know, he's a comedian and... <clears throat> don't think you just can't take him serious and people really love he has a huge audience she threw out some stats how many listeners how many d- downloads how he ranks and um joy bayar is like uh she, well sunny hostin said yeah he's a comedian we can't we, are we supposed to take him serious now and joy bayar is like well hold on now just because he's a comedian but you know basically it's like the left mainstream media went on damage control to cover for Sanjay and CNN. Like, ah, uh, uh, horse dewormer is is not approved f- for COVID, and yes, it, it has been used for humans, but we CNN ain't lying. CNN got caught lying on purpose, twisting up the truth to paint a false narrative. This is the same network that brought you Russia collusion hoax, <clears throat> the Covington kid hoax, drink bleach hoax. Uh, find people on both sides, hoax. All the hoaxes. It's the same people, same network. It's like they're putting uh, tape on everything to try to keep it all together, to keep this whole narrative, this whole illusion together. But they're not even using like duct tape or Gorilla Glue. They're using like scotch tape. And it's falling apart like at, at faster and faster every week. They're just like, no, this man's very alert and very capable. This administration is not incompetent. Bare shelves are a sign of good times to come. Inflation is not bad. Uh, it'll cause $45 trillion, gonna cost $0.00. Um, you know, Russia, I mean, uh, China's our friend, you know, just going on and on. It did not come from a lab. It, see, the jab is, <laughs> the poke is the only way. It's stuff like this. It's conversations like this that give me a lot of hope for this podcast, this platform, and the people that listen. Because the people that listen will watch these clips. They'll share them with their friends. They'll, they'll help things that make sense go viral, where I don't think that despite how many troll accounts we might see on Twitter or Instagram <clears throat> or on tweets for Lena Hidalgo or whoever, I don't think there's enough actual people under those threads to make their posts go viral because it doesn't make any sense. It really just, if you just stopped and thought a it's little bit about it. It's just weird logic a yeah. lot of times. It's not even logic, it's just weird word salad. It's not even logic. It's like whatever you're trying to do with it, it doesn't like, make any sense. Yeah, inflation is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What? 45 trillion gonna cost zero dollars. Back to the mandates. The mandates are the only way are the thing that's going to sink that ship. Mandates are the only way. We have to, like, we have to fire all the nurses. It's going to sink that ship. We have to fire all the pilots. Without a doubt. We got to have National Guard driving school buses in Massachusetts. It's okay if supply chains are, are offshored. We've offshored everything. Domino's Pizza came out, as the CEO, and said, we need more immigration because uh, we got a labor shortage. Really? Yeah. We'll look it up. Maybe we'll talk about it next time. But it's kind of like, okay, here's the part where major corporations show you that they benefit from open borders. And I saw a picture, I don't know if it's real, but it was McDonald's on the on the marquee. It said, now hiring $21 an hour. Golly. <clears throat> so here comes the iPad kiosk. For real. We'll talk about this probably some more too, but along with these jab mandates and people walking out on those, which are not going reported as that, even though some of them are, and some of them may not be, because there are companies like John Deere who are seeing a strike from union workers that are, it's all pay stuff. Like, so a lot of the things are coming together, whether it's a jab mandate, whether it's, you know, pay. Whether poke it's, mandate. Uh, uh, yeah, poke mandates, pay mandates, the whole things are kind of coming together. And uh, it's it's not good all the way around, but it's not really going reported as such. It's not being reported as uh, air traffic control and pilots don't want the jab, It's or, or John Deere, you know, whatever. My point is, you're going to see more of this from all big industries, from all big corporations, from unions across the country, and all of that combined, because unions usually support, you know, left-leaning candidates. And I think it was, um, someone in California was a huge union, just, Gavin Newsom filed to have, uh, like, a, the judge of LA County, I think, remove the, the jab, the poke mandate for this particular union, because they had donated, like, $1.5 million to his 
re-election. His, so they uh, got an exception, right? So this, that's that kind of stuff. Like, oh, there's a hole in the there's a hole in the ship already. Are you trying to plug this with bubble gum? And like, too many people are like, wait, why are you giving them exemption now? So it's 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 crumbling. I'm I just feel it. <clears throat> the only problem is a lot of people on the left not really paying attention. You know, they don't they don't really get it. They don't really see it. <clears throat> they see things from a different perspective. <clears throat> you know, they believe Jen Psaki. They believe Fauci still. Like even on my shows, man. You know. Even though we had we had some let's go Brandon chants bust out, we had the Trump train people in the house. They had fucking flags. They gave us some. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll I'll put them up on this side soon. But um, <laughs> real real good ones. Real dope. ones that like Biden sucks or something. But anyway, um, even though you had a lot of that, there was also people where it's kind of like okay, I'm talking shit about Fauci on stage, and I could just tell they just like. Why? What's wrong with Fauci? What if I, what did we miss? Did, Fauci, did he have like emails leak or something, or what happened? Wait, was there a cover up? Wait, were they doing gain of function research? Like, people don't be up on all this shit because they just think like, nah, sabes que wey la política no. Like, they don't really get into it. it. Sounds boring. Like Rand Paul, Pelosi. Who are these characters? Totally. Chuck Schumer. Don't mind who. What is that? Like, they pay attention to sports or something else. Yeah. <clears throat> They're not cool like us, Rob. That's goddamn right. All right, what's the last topic we're going to hit before we wrap this episode up? You want to, which one do you want to do that we haven't done? New study of 600 uh, oh. fell to 3% effective. Okay, so this was uh, reported by the Daily Mail. Let me find this article here. You want to guess which, uh, which poke it was? They fell to 3%? Yeah. Mm, was it J&J? Yeah. Damn, bro, that hoe ain't effective at all. Fauci tells people who got the J&J they should feel good about taking a second shot. It says it should never have been a single jab after a study found that protection fell to just 3% in six months. So after six months, it's like you never even got it. So you got it for nothing? You know, it's supposed to be the one hitter quitter, you know? Like Chappelle said in his special, he's like, I got the J&J. He's like... Oh, that was so good. Said, Give me what the homeless got or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me what they gave the homeless or some shit like that. No, I think you said that's the most... Uh, that's the most N-word thing I've done in my entire life was get the J&J. And then he goes into why it was masterfully crafted. Um, dude, yeah, I don't know. I know we already talked a lot about the jabs, but this is pretty crazy. And you can, you can, uh, duck, duck, go this or whatever you like to use. Daily Mail reports about the 3% efficacy of the J&J jab. Basically, people thought motherfuckers were conspiracy theorists when they said it's going to be like software updates. You're going to need boosters all the time. Software updates. That's a great it's, way to It's a different it. business model where it's like we get you in the, in the thing. Now you're getting the update. Well, you know, and, and there's a good explanation for this if you just, you know, want to think it's uh, whatever, natural. But Pfizer is like the fifth or sixth most owned stock by all of Congress. I don't know if you knew that. Wow. So people, the comments will be, and this makes sense, like, well, if it's the most effective, of course they have a lot of their stock in Pfizer, right? Yes, yes, that is a good logical way to look at it. But if you go deeper, you might find some other reasons why they all have their fucking money in Pfizer. Man, let me get some Pfizer stock. Yeah. Real quick. There's this, <laughs> there's this uh, dude, there's this account I follow on Twitter that's like Pelosi. Have you seen it's like Pelosi Trends or Pelosi? Uh, oh, yeah. All of her stock. That supposedly, bro, like she's killing it harder than Warren Buffett. A thousand percent. Almost as if she got inside info. Yeah, it's, it's called uh, Nancy Pelosi Portfolio Tracker. It's at Nancy Tracker. And, uh, yeah, her and her husband, man. Mm-hmm, killing it. I mean, they're making hand over fist. Is there a way to just follow what she buys and then buy that? No, because that, that's actually exactly what I was going to say. The comment on one of the, the latest tweets was, can we all just do what she does? And then they replied, no, that would be considered insider trading. We'd all go to jail. Just by she, copying what she does? But you have to do it when she does it. Like when the results come out of what her gain was, she bought or sold or whatever at a certain time. We don't know when she does it. We just know what she did. Oh, you'd have to do it when she does yeah, it. So yeah. that you're getting in at the yeah, dip. Or yeah, whatever. right, right. And that would be in call insider <laughs> trading. That so yeah, insider. man. So yeah. look, everybody listening, I want to continue the discussion on the Discord, in the newsletter, on the podcast and on the patreon about like economics in other words are you what are you stocking up on are you trying to get more ammo you trying to get another gun you trying to do the food thing like how off grid you know you got a generator you got solar panels what type of shit are y'all doing are you parking your money in like 
precious metals and gold and silver? Are you parking your money in real estate? Are you leaving it liquid as American cash, U.S. dollar? That's put, risky. You putting it under the colchon? Yeah, don't, uh, yeah no, that ain't... Uh, again, you know, we don't, we're not here to give financial advice, <laughs> but we would love to have maybe... Um, Chris Irons Chris back, Irons on, back yeah. on. Different people, you know, if y'all know any economists that are like really dope that y'all think are willing to come on this podcast... Let us know in the Discord or on the Patreon. <clears throat> Maybe we can send some tips in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can give some, I mean, I don't want to be making it seem like we spamming people about gold and silver all in the newsletter because the shit going to go to junk mail. Yeah. But what are some cool ways of like, Maybe we go to the shooting range when, before we do a show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just for like a, a meetup type thing or, or do some YouTube content that deals with prepping. You know, what's in your bug out bag type That's, of thing. What did you send me before uh, before you left for San Antonio? He's like, man, I should do this. What was it? You sent me something. It was like a, it was like an ad maybe for something where it was like plant, you're planting things and the ad showed people like planting things and getting ready for that kind of stuff. Do you remember what it was? <sighs> was it, it was an ad for like a... Um, damn. I can't remember, but it was like, I sh like you, this family, they ordered some things and it was like this looked like a pack of dirt yeah and it had like this cut out and then boom it's like plants food or something can grow out of each pack and <clears throat> i don't know man it's just with supply chains the u.s dollar inflation bare shelves cost of goods a motherfucker keeping an open mind like man how much crypto we got what's up with this precious minerals and gold and precious metals gold and silver what's the real estate market doing right now what is it doing right You know now? what I'm saying? So we got a, I, we posted a question from the TIA earlier today. A lot of people, I guess, haven't seen it yet. So we only have like three you want to do them. Sure. Just give, give them some extra content here on the public episode. Don't forget free apps or uh, premium episodes rather on Fridays. Maybe more. Maybe I was going to pitch this to you. I'll do it on the air to kind of put you on the spot. What do you think about doing? Because people love the Chingo Chats. What if we did the way we do two uh, RPTs? We, we try to knock out two Chingo Chats per week. Yeah, yeah, like kind of take the place of the RPT shorts because I, I realized after doing the the closer and the Nas X episode, that's basically what we would have done as like RPT short, talk about pop culture kind of stuff, but we just do it in a Chingo Chat form. Uh, that way we can put out that feed for Chingo Chats and like put those there. And if you want the fifty other you know Chingo Chats, they're exclusively on the Patreon. Oh hell yeah, yeah, I'm so down. We'll chat about that, but yeah, <coughs> I'm down, man. Because live touring, I don't know what the fuck the future holds. Yeah, at all. Okay, so is that the first question? Yeah, shut up and refill my popcorn. That's shut a great name. <laughs> That's the person's name. Shut up and refill my popcorn. Hey, guys, I enjoy the podcast, especially the Chingo Chats. Keep doing y'all's thing. How high do you see gas prices going up? I live in a small town on South 35, and it hits, and it, it hit 305 as of yesterday. Thanks again. P.S. What is y'all's favorite horror franchise and its worst sequel? Damn, good questions. Yeah, super good question. <clears throat> you must love movies. All right, so um, they like the Chingo Chats. Thank you. How high do you see gas prices going? Here, I'm already, I have to put premium in my car, and I want to say I paid like three eighty nine the other day. Am I supposed to be putting premium in my shit? I asked my to sell that, and, I, and she goes, I think we use mid-grade. And I was like, That's not, that sounds about <laughs> it. Like yeah. you're the weed man. Yeah, no, usually it's like uh, like cars that have like forced induction, like a turbocharger, supercharger, and, and some like, you know, luxury brands say, you know, premium required, but for, for the most part, it's yeah. fine. Regular. Good old regular <laughs> gas. Mid. Let me get that mid. Give me that mid. So, man. Um, I don't think, I don't, I don't see it around us going over $4. If it goes over $4 here, people are going to freak the fuck out. Yes, if it goes over four dollars, people people will probably start to pay attention because yeah. that's creeping up on five. Have we ever seen it at four? Have you ever seen gas at four dollars <clears throat> of of any kind? In a way, it already is because the dollar ain't the dollar no more. Well, that's true. If you inflation, that, yeah, but just straight up on the sign, like you pull up to oh, a shell and you see it's four dollars. Man, to my knowledge, it's hard for me to remember <laughs> that because when the when the getting was good, I didn't pay attention to that kind of stuff. <laughs> man, when Trump was in office, we had so much work. I ain't, I ain't pay attention to shit. Um, it might hit four because look, let's look at the factors. You probably know more about this than me. So some people argue there was pent up demand in a pan right during the pandemic. People weren't moving around as much. All of a sudden, everybody needs all the gas at once. Um, the cost of the barrel, whoop de woo, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. We're no longer energy independent. I don't know if the Keystone Pipeline thing has anything to do, <clears throat> but um. 
what would you say the trend is going to be? It don't look like it's slowing down. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking up in Texas. What's the highest price gas has ever been in Texas? And let's see. It says uh, in 2008, EP gas reaches $4 El Paso times. Maybe it did reach $4 in 2008. Same oh, year man. as the uh, housing crisis. Same year as Obama and Biden recession. Basically. Yep. There was that tweet that, uh, or the image of the tweet that Trump posted from like July, summer of last year, where if Biden gets in the office, you're going to see the worst. Was it? You know what I'm talking about? Keep going. It was the worst rece- uh, depression in the lights that you've ever seen or something like that. And? And I forgot the rest and of And you're it. lucky to have a country left after Oh, that. yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> let's find it yeah see if you can find it it is such a good quote i wish i could post it to my instagram but uh i already know it kind of feels like you might be getting a little bit more traction on your on your main page do you feel did you feel that when you on your post recently the last couple days barely <laughs> barely i say that to say this don't fuck it up i'm just kidding yeah i know right uh 2012 gas average highest ever in texas okay the texas uh, 2012 the annual average price of a gallon was 343 for regular that means premium must have been over four dollars <throat> so it looks like that's about as high as it's ever been four bucks which is extremely high oh wait during obama in el paso yeah um hopefully we don't get to that because considering what everybody's coming out of it's going to make them want to go to uh, bicycles and scooters and mopeds. That's nuts. But yeah, guys, hopefully uh, I wouldn't go the EV route personally myself, um, yeah. like Tesla and all that kind of shit. But if you got to do what you got to do. All right. Next question. He's, uh, this person also said, what is y'all's favorite horror franchise and its worst sequel? <clears throat> You're the movie buff. You got some. Barely. Barely. I, I can't say I'm like a horror film expert. Um. I mean, back in the day, obviously, you had Freddy and Jason. Uh, what else was scary? They used to have a lot of Stephen King, like, psychological type, like, Carrie. Um, oh, that was a good one. Was that the one about the car? No, Carrie was the girl. They dumped the blood on yeah. the head. And then the one about the car. What would you remember that one? I thought that one was Carrie. What, the car? What was the name of the car? Kit the co- from Knight Rider? The, no, the car that would kill people, man. <laughs> Stephen no idea. King. You young motherfucker. <laughs> I just turned 32 yesterday. Jesus Christ. These motherfuckers don't know. Sh- oh, yeah, man. Happy, yeah, yeah, happy belated birthday, Thank you, brother. thank you. All right, Brian Altenoff wants to know, what to do, Ching on Rob, when the midterms start kicking in, will y'all be promoting candidates? Wait, wait, I gotta go back to the previous question. I gotta say this. The Hills Have Eyes, did you ever watch it? Man, I don't really recall that one. I might have to go back and watch it. I might have to go back and watch it because every time someone asks me that, I say the hills have eyes. It must have left such an impression mm. that I always reference it. But I know there's other ones which I never saw. But the first one I thought was phenomenal. So I guess because it's a uh, Halloween season. Yeah, yeah. We might have to bust it back out. Let's do it. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, candidates. Um, that's interesting because I don't know that I would ever, and we've kind of touched on this before, attaching yourself to a particular person. You know what I mean? Yeah, Even yeah. if it's like the the uh, national candidate, whether it's Trump or whoever, is always one of those things. Like it's not really the person. It's like what are they saying and doing? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like I I don't see myself promoting a candidate per se. I'd have to like really know you well and vouch for you. <clears throat> but having someone on oh, and sure. asking important questions and just kind of letting them say. Are you America first? Or are you America last? Yeah, just have them sell themselves. Yeah, that's what they're doing. How, what? How would you help? you know fix or what do you think about this economy what do you think about this policy what's up with mandates yeah important shit that parents care yeah critical race theory what's up with the schools you can have the fbi on their asses or what what's, up with, all, what's up with all the pronouns and shit y'all trying to teach the preschoolers did you see that video a uh, rogan posted of barry weiss that former new york times uh journalist that said what, crazy was, world yeah the, the, the world's gone mad and brian stelter is just kind of like so how's the world gone so, mad? so yes yeah, so how and it's like uh when you're not a lot when they say you're racist to question the origins of the virus when you can't even say women are a thing like she was just going on on. (sighs) rogan's you know he's dropping them red pills here and there too still trying to be mr you know not picking sides but oh i'm liberal looking at yeah yeah (laughs) i'm super liberal oh i'm I'm super super liberal socially yeah except for you know capitalism guns hunting you know (laughs) a whole fucking gamut like a whole bunch of shit mandates yeah freedom yeah let my flag fry fly that was an excellent clip i mean i think i did post it the Barry I think one? I did put it on my Instagram. Yes, I did. Because I'm like, you know what, man? <clears throat> I'm already I'm already shadow banned. Well, fuck it. Play it if you put posted it on your Instagram. I'm because... like, I'm already shadow banned. Here. <laughs> I'm already. the world gone mad? You know, when you have the chief 
reporter on the beat of COVID for the New York Times talking about how questioning or pursuing the question of the lab leak is racist, the world has gone mad. When you're not able to say out loud and in public that there are differences between men and women, the world has gone mad. When we're not allowed to acknowledge that rioting is rioting and face. it is bad, and that silence is not violence, but violence is violence, the world has gone mad. When we're not able to say that Hunter Biden's laptop is a story worth pursuing, the world has gone mad. When in the name of progress, young school children, as young as kindergarten, are being separated in public schools because of their race, and that is called progress rather than segregation, the world has gone mad. There mm. are dozens mm. of examples that I could share mm. with, with you. So in what ways... I, now I gotta go back and watch that whole thing to see how he followed up with that. Like, so how in do what you, ways... Yeah, how do you follow that up when she gives you that dish of red hot tamales? So in what ways... And, and, and how many comments did I get? Twelve. One. Oh, one? One. Shadow ban like a motherfucker. You know, um, you had a part at the end of your set where, you know, you, you touched on that. And I wish I'd been recording. I didn't know you were going to do that. Where you had everybody take their phones out. Mm -hmm. That was great. I think that everyone had their phones out. Recording. I had to start doing that because I'm like... Have you been doing that? I started... In San Antonio? Yeah. That's fantastic. I barely... Yours probably was the first show. Oh, shit. That was great. I wish I'd have known you'd have done that so I could have recorded that whole... Because leading up to it, you're like, I'm hella banned on, you know, and you went through the whole thing because... If you make it a part of the act, people might think it's not true, but I think a lot of them did know because they said, I didn't know you were in town or I didn't see your ads or whatever. But I mean, my comments are always like, dude, I have not seen your post. One of the first ones from earlier today was like, dude, I finally saw a post that I didn't have to go to your account to actually see. Or I type out your complete name. You won't come up. I can't tag you. I try following you and it says, are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you sure? People are getting, I saw Luke. Are uh, you sure you want to follow this person? <laughs> Luke Rudikowski from Timcast. Same thing. It's so it's like y'all are lame, man. Why am I even on y'all's platform? But we have to play within, you know, color within the lines, be on y'all's sandbox, contort to all the rules, just so that we can somehow let you know we're on tour, we got a podcast, we got a newsletter, check us out on Patreon, and so forth. We're building the community over here, guys. Come yes, join. for sure. All right. What um, was the last one? Is that Log G the last yeah, one? Yeah, Log G says, Shadow Band, hate it on, and still strong. Amor only shines when you polish it. Pura gente pesada. <laughs> nice. He had a comment, not a question. I like it. I like it. Hell yeah. Uh, I we'll appreciate probably get, all the participation. Yeah, we'll probably have more for the next episode after people see this. I know a lot of people are at work. A lot of these people are hustling constantly, so that's good. But uh, that was good shit, man. <laughs> yeah, we covered some important stuff, man. Especially like, you know, the economy as we're heading into this Christmas season. People trying to get gifts. You know, I, I recommend Buy American. Uh, I need to make time, hop on Mike Lindell's website, maybe just get all my family pillows or something. <laughs> Real talk, I really like mine. And I'm reading the book where, dude, it's just a nail biter, bro. <clears throat> I walk into the Airbnb, I dropped something off. I dropped a box of stuff off for Chingo before the Saturday show, and he's like, I don't know why, he just brought it up randomly. Like, I can't put it down. Like, I no, can't put man, this book down. It's really good. The Mike Lindell book, like, has stuff about business and addiction and God and just family being a dad relationship you know backstabbing trying to get the business off the ground luck you know what i'm saying made an infomercial they told me it wasn't gonna work i had to fire the director i had to fire the ad agency you know what i mean just little things like there i forget the i forget the term but he said in advertising and like papers they were like these little column ads mm -hmm. but they were like super cheap oh yeah and they would just uh stick them in randomly you never knew what page it was going to be on but they just needed to like fill the page or whatever and he's like those doubled our sales i was able to finesse that turn that into this flip this save this you know always flying by the what do they say by the seat of your pants or whatever pants, yeah but uh very very interesting anyway i had a good time excited to be back podcasting before we hit the road raleigh north carolina ticket sales need to pick up if y'all still want me to go out there yeah. Ticket sales need to pick up. Not, I'm going to have to be blame it on something else. And, and I not. can't catch a flight. Southwest didn't <clears throat> catch my flight. That's also a factor. So, uh, anyway, we appreciate the feedback. Please continue to spread the clips. Uh, the podcast streams are going up. All the numbers are going up. The patrons are going up. We appreciate the love and hit up the newsletter. Sass.